All right, what's going on, everybody? Physio Trader here, and sorry for the late posting of the watch list. I actually made one of these yesterday. Turns out the audio was all messed up, and I did have to redo it. So this prime probably going to go through a little bit quicker. So maybe that's a little bit to your benefit. Overall, the market started off, um, you know, after the Fitch downgrading of credit, it seems like nobody really cared. We had a gap down, and then the market kind of gathered up and rallied the next couple of days. And then yesterday being Friday, so today is Saturday. Friday being the close, about an hour and a half to two hours prior to the market it closed the entire market started heading south and it continued to head south starting up around anywhere from one to two percent on the day everything ended roughly around minus one percent on the day a couple other bigger names like tesla down two and a half percent over a six dollar change and apple the biggest one down over five percent after giving earnings and basically the gist of the earnings is that they've got like a hundred I think it was like 165 billion in cash and cash reserves or cash equivalent reserves on hand. So they are doing quite well. The difference being is the reason that the market is dropping because despite the fact that it's almost a $200 per share price tag, now it is sitting at 189. Uh, I'm sorry, 180. I think it's like 181. Sorry about that. Um, basically says that, you know, once again, iPhone sales are falling and that not only they're falling, they're just not keeping up. Uh, and expectations for the next quarter and the next quarter after that is going to be similar to the quarter we just had, which says, hey, they got a lot of cash on hand, but they're not selling more and more and more. That's the problem when you become a $3 trillion company, unless you start generating more and more revenue opportunities, then it is going to be harder. Tim Cook did say during it as well, that although they're exploring AI and they have been for several years, uh, although they hinted that they've been doing that and it made the last couple of dollar rally going into Apple, that they're not ready to release too much information regarding it until they've, of course, uh, solidified and really uh, made a long-term equitable solution to everybody and making sure that it's not just uh, a soft um, delivery. They want to make sure that everything is done a little bit better. So going into the markets here, still moving a little slow on the shoulder, so bear with me here. Going into the markets, we do have Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge over here. On the left, uh, the scanners, again, now, as you can see over here, most of the market is red, and that is just how it ended. It is Saturday, so again, everything is done, at least for the stock market. Uh, you know, some futures markets and other things are open. Uh, we do have these six charts that are linked. Starting on the SPY, uh, we got the 2-minute, 15-minute, 30-minute, 60-minute, daily, and the weekly. So I did want to preface and say, over the last two weeks, I've almost exclusively been trading SPY. Uh, now, let me say that differently. Uh, I've been trading, day trading exclusively SPY with the exception of, um, you know, a, a couple tickers here and there. But I, I will say I think it's been about a week and I have not traded Tesla. I have not traded NVIDIA. I have not traded AMD or anything like that. And that's for no reason other than I've actually started to trade with SPY. Uh, the idea is maybe looking at SPY options, which I've been doing, or SPX options. Um, but I will say this for right now, I'm actually a big fan of SPY zero day to expiration options, which is kind of interesting because uh, traditionally speaking, I don't trade zero DTE options, but with SPY, it's a little bit different. It's very, very, very liquid. And I'm not looking for these like massive catastrophic moves or anything like that. I've honestly just been scalping anywhere from 10 to 20 cents on those uh, with anywhere of a size of five to 10 to 15 contracts, which would be anywhere from 100 to 300 dollars on those trades. Uh, the one thing I will say I like about the SPY before we get into it more is it seems to very much so be honoring its trend lines. And it seems to honor, especially on the larger time frames, it seems to really honor uh, exactly what is going on. Now, if that's not the case and it's wrong, get out of the way because uh, th those uh, those option contracts can really uh, eat into your eat into your desk profit very quickly if you are on the wrong side of it. But if you're on the right side of it, it can really, really pay dividends as well. So um, starting over here, let's just start from the top. Uh, the S&P 500 the SPY. Now this is a weekly candle here, but I want to uh, preface something that this thing was almost at 453 for the high on the day and it ended at 446. So the last two hours, this thing was just in a free fall. And there's no surprise that it came down towards this eight simple moving average on the daily, or I'm sorry, on the weekly. I did expect it to get there, just did not expect it to get there that day, especially how the day started. Again, here looking at the day, you can see here we gapped down a little bit uh, after the Fitch ratings gapped down, but just moving up. Gap down, had a nice retest, re, um, uh, a retest towards that eight simple moving average. Came in, basically touched the butt, and then back down she went. 
what was interesting to me is how crazy and how fast this one did break down. I do see this thing breaking down in the 441 to 444 range, which would be evident by this resistance here or, or most previous resistance, which is now, in my opinion, likely to placate as a short-term support because we did have resistance, 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 broke above it. And then now we are going to, I anticipate getting some level of support. I actually think it'll be closer towards a 441. And um, we'll see. So I did over here on the previous video I did discuss uh, that was uh, just did not get good audio quality. I have taken off um, extended hours and I'll show you why. Um, so I've basically taken off, where is it here? because of these, these upper wicks and lower wicks are just messing with the chart so much and it's really annoying to me. And instead of going in one by one, every wick on every time frame, it just seems to be too uh, obnoxious in my opinion. So I've taken off the extended hours, at least for now going through this. Um, the one thing I do like about the light speed charts is they do seem to correct for spikes, but I do actually do like the, the, the Charles Schwab charts. Uh, substantially, substantially better. So um, I use the light speed charts when we do my active day trades, but outside of that, I do use the the Charles Schwab charts, which is why I'm always on here. I also use Webull charts as well as some other ones too. Uh, Webull I pre predominantly use on my phone and my iPad. On my computer, I predominantly use the the Schwab charts because unfortunately, the Schwab charts are garbage on a phone or an iPad. So, uh, all right, now that we got that out of the way. Um, over here, you could see I drew this trend line basically from here to here, and then look at this. I mean, and that's what I mean. Last 30 minutes, I guess a little bit longer, 30 minute candles, one, two, three, four, five. So it lasts almost three hours of the day. This thing came in almost a near double top, cup and handle that just broke. Um, and so over here, I will say I did trade some 450 uh, calls, lost a little bit on that, got out of the way after about a 30 cent loss. Um, on the underlying, and that turned out to be um, a bigger loss than I'd like, but I was able to recover most of it. Ended the day minus, or I'm sorry, ended the day 400 green. Uh, after I was waiting, I just waited, 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 waited for this to get out of the way. And then on this bounce right here, I played 447.50 uh, calls, uh, took a nice bounce, and then I played 447 calls, took a nice bounce, and then this thing went sideways. The problem is, is towards the end of the day, as much as I wanted to play this and trade this, as much as I wanted to play and trade this, um, the option was expiring in like 20 minutes. I mean, it just, well, I guess technically the S&P 500, the SPY, not the S&P 500, the SPY ETF uh, does actually trade the SPY, the Qs, and things like that. They actually trade 15 minutes after the market open or after the market closes. So a little bit more time to be fair, but not very much. And that just meant that the... The, the delta and the theta decay on that was ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculously high. And the thing was just burning money. Even if you're right at burning money uh, very, 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 very quickly uh, watching that fl uh, fold away. Now over here, sorry, I'm a little bit slow over here. Um, here is a little bit, uh, based on those dailies I was showing you, here's that same uh, resistance line here. I think what's going to happen, we're either going to come back and we're going to bounce off of this area, and then we're going to try to do at least a retest. Um, but I think what's going to happen is we're going to come here, we're going to get ourselves a little bit of a mini bounce, and then we're going to break down and then come back down into this range of sorts. And that's when we're going to kind of get stuck. And so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for based on Monday, how Monday morning is going to open up. I want to see how this thing, uh, if, if we do get ourselves a little bit of a bounce in the first 30 minutes, first 20 minutes, I, I don't really care. I'll trade that however the chart shows me, but I want to see if this thing is going to make that, that bigger play down to 441. And then I'll look to play the calls. Uh, now, that is, of course, is a couple of ideas. For those of you not familiar with options, calls meaning you want the price to go up, puts means you want the price to go down. Uh, I'm In this particular case, I, I do want to preface by saying, uh, although I sell a lot of puts and sometimes sell calls uh, in, in this strategy, especially with the zero DTE strategy, I am only the buyer of the premium. I am buying, so I'm long puts, I'm long calls, regardless of which way I want the market direction to go. Uh, now, as far as over there, um, I will say this, that... Um, a couple things. If you go on this preface and you think that I'm right, or at least in the idea, you know, there's a couple ideas you can do. And, and certainly this is just, you know, ideas. This is not for you to take and make a trade plan out of. But if you think the price is going to come down, what I would say is at this point, just let it see, you know, one, if it's going to come down into this 445 range, um, and then if not, see if it comes into that 445, 444 range, or at least in between there's, you can look to do uh, buy a little bit of calls and basically just give yourself a hard stop. It breaks below 443.80 or 90, and you just get out of the way, let the drop continue. And then as it comes back down lower and lower, that's when you can look to really placate on uh, the higher call volume if you want to on a 440 strike or at whatever, uh, depends on what the, the, 
the volume and implied volatility and all of that things is playing on you. Now you can trade that, you can just wait and get out of the way and let the drop occur, or you can load the boat on puts if you're a believer in that. What I would do is if, if you are gonna load the boat on puts, I would definitely just let this thing see where it's gonna come, especially because I do think the market's gonna drop down a little bit. I don't think we're gonna gap down this far, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do drop down to the 445 range. And then if you wanna wait for the little bit of a pullback and then uh, a little bit of a bounce, I'd say, um, what I would be doing is if this thing drops into the 444 and then it bounces up to the 445, over the 445 30 mark is when I would actually start buying some puts uh, for it to go down. And then if the thing comes back down, you know, buy some more puts here. And then if we break down through the 448, um, I'd say 443 50 range, that's when I would really start loading the boat on puts and just let this thing flourish further and further to the downside. But of course, that is again. Um, that's all hypothetical until we see how the market opens up. One thing I do want to caution you against is again on those larger time frames, we have that 50 simple moving average, which is uh, currently located at the 439. So again, credence to the 440 and like, uh, which I do like, and there's a lot of support over there on the, the weekly. So I'm not suggesting a, a full blown out market crash or anything like that. I just think that there is going to be some opportunity for um, some increased implied volatility, which is going to be beneficial for traders. Um, now, apart from that, so we did spend a little bit of time on SPY because that's, like I said, I've been spending the last, uh, I think around the last uh, week and a half, two weeks, almost exclusively looking at it. So I'm really uh, curious, and this is just truly for myself. Um, now over here, we did have Amazon gave earnings. Amazon and Apple gave earnings. Amazon uh, benefited by over a 10% move, and then it did give off, as you can see over here, based on the weekly, it did give some off. Now it's interesting, we did get as high as around 143 and change. The, the high in the week was 143.63. We got very high. Look at this. This was a previous resistance I had drawn, and bada bing, bada boom. That's what I like about the longer time frames, the, the larger ones, the weekly and the daily, is they are your larger self-fulfilling prophecies. Now, as far as uh, Amazon, it did open, and it opened with a nice, beautiful gap and go until, of course, the entire market sold off. Um, I do want to preface and say I have absolutely no idea what went on. I, I wasn't watching the news. I didn't care. Um, that's the, I, I've actually felt like I've become a better and better trader by having no inclination into why the market is moving, what's it's moving and really just take that entire analysis out of the way. And so I'm just focusing on the chart. Uh, now, as far as the longer term holds or things, yeah, I want to wait until the economic outlook looks a little bit better before I start buying heavy into the longer term accounts that are designed to weather the up and down storms. I do think there's going to be a little bit of a storm ahead. Uh, I don't think we're going to have this full blown out market disaster that a lot of people and a lot of other YouTubers, et cetera, and talking heads are proclaiming. I also don't think that the, the skies are green and blue and sunny and that everything's just going to be absolutely wonderful. Um, not green, uh, probably more green like tornadoes coming. Um, so I think things are going to be a little bit different. Coming over here on Amazon, we did have this nice little run up, uh, a little bit of a give back. The difference is, see where this one ended up. It's just really close to that 140. Um, this one I think is going to be very interesting. And for this one, I will say it really is going to play K to how uh, the market opens up uh, regarding uh, Monday morning. Um, so over here, we did have uh, Apple gave its earnings um, over here. And as you can see here, earnings were good and the market didn't like it. You can see the market over here and the market continued to sell off um, as evident by many things. So this big, ridiculously engulfing bearish candle on the weekly, volume increasing, um, very large. Um, basically, we had ourselves a gap. Uh, our gap and go a little bit of a retest towards that 50 simple moving average but now we are full blown out going below it the one thing i don't like about this we don't have ourselves a little bit of a wick of protection to find out where your stop is going to be if you're in a uh, a put or a shorting category uh, i do want to say i've traded puts seldomly with apple and calls and they just don't move they don't move the way i want them to and apple is almost exclusively on my do not touch list because it's just it's not worth the time uh, for a day trade or a swing trade perspective, at least for me. Maybe a swing trade, I should say that. Um, but overall, I mean, let's see, the high on uh, 187 down to 181. So that's a pretty big move for Apple. Uh, and if you look over here on the weekly, the high on the week was 196 to 181. So it's like a $15 move on Apple. That's a pretty 
pretty steep pullback or clawback, so I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I actually do like the idea of this coming all the way back down towards the 200 simple moving average on the daily, but I said that before. I think the 160 is still overbought for Apple at its current the, the current economic condition that we're dealing with right now. This thing, however, is jumping up so aggressively strong that um, I, I would be surprised if this thing gets down on the 162 range. Even I think it would be a, a big sign to say time to time to buy, uh, just because that that to me would be a very good uh, purchasing opportunity. Let's see, and then over here on the weekly, 160. So uh, very very nice. Uh, over there so definitely something to consider and something that I, I will consider so although I did say I don't really trade it that would be a swing trade slash it in the long-term account I don't mean and on my light speed account or anything like that um, Tesla is really kind of sideways um, from the larger time spans I mean this thing is just it's kind of trying to find its space right now um, I haven't really traded the last couple of days and I'm kind of glad because it seems like it's kind of choppy out there. Now, of course it is, it is summer hours. There is a lot of chop going on overall in the market. So that's why I'm not too entirely, uh, concerned. And I do want to preface and say that Friday or yesterday trading day was a very weird day. I mean, the market moved options, futures, everything moved pretty low, pretty high, pretty low, pretty high twice around. Um, and many other opportunities that did exist, both long and short. Um, so if, if you traded yesterday on Friday and you survived, kudos to you. Uh, doesn't mean you're a good trader technically. It doesn't mean you're a bad trader. I mean, as long as you manage risk, you're fine. Um, but definitely a lot to uh, take in there. So Tesla, I'm just going to skip out on now because um, I just think it's a lot of summer volume. AMD is the interesting one to me. So AMD gave its earnings, and over here, this bad boy basically just gave its earnings, had a nice, beautiful pop up and towards the, I don't even remember how high it went. I have after hours off. It's like 125, yeah, so 125, 126. This bad boy could not, however, hold. So 125, I think it went down from 125 all the way to like 109 again. Let's see, what was the low on this was uh, 107.38. So a, 20, a near $20 move per share this thing just sold off. And then, of course, the ridiculousness of the fact that we can sell off $20 and then in a couple of days uh, we buy it back on, especially with AMD. I'm not really long biased AMD right now. Um, again, I think all of the chip sector is oversold. I would like to see NVIDIA come down. Um, I see where the, the hype and pandemonium is on it, but I definitely just think that there's more of a cooling off. I do like this on the daily to come back down a little bit further. But on the weekly, let's actually go start with the weekly. And the weekly, I mean, this bad boy is, we're talking channel pattern. So, I mean, I don't know if I've seen a more beautiful weekly channel pattern than this. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, I actually like this as a long trade now. And I'll say why. I like to see this thing get below 107. I'd like to see it get low. And then I think this thing will immediately get bought back up. Um, I do think that whatever direction it does decide to pick, um, it's going to be a fake break to the opposite side. And when you very seldomly get channel patterns like that, where that thing is just on a weekly candle over candle basis, it's just going truly sideways. To me, that's the time to whip out the advanced iron condor butterflies, etc. And that's where the real money is going to be made. Uh, if you know what those are, kudos, um, you know, work on those strategies. If you don't, just ignore what I just said. Um, but going over there, or, or, you know, just be a seller of premium as the thing just decides which way it wants to go and the time it takes to decide, you get to just, uh, you know, capture that investment on that time decay. Uh, a weekly, over, or I'm sorry, the daily over here, basically demonstrating more of the exact same premise is that this thing has taken a while to get up and then, you know, a day or two slaughters it back down, a while to get back up, slaughters it back down. Um, that nice upper wick showing up on that daily though, that tells me, I think that there's going to be a little bit more pain to the downside, which, um, I, I think would actually be good for the market. Uh, Nvidia over here, it looks like it is holding up over 444, 445. Um, we did break below as evident by, uh, so we, we did break below this as evident by this. We do now have this down sloping 850 and 200 simple moving average now at this point. So the interest is going to be to come to see if this thing does want to make a push further back down. I do, I, I will say, and I've said this before, I would like to see this thing under 400. 
Uh, I think under 400 to 380, this thing is going to pick up a lot of volatility, implied volatility, and I think the um, opportunities for a day trader or a swing trader are going to be very vast and plentiful. Um, but first, we do have to get under that eight simple moving average on the daily. We have to close below it. Probably at that point, we'll get below it on the weekly, close below it, come back, retest it, and then we can see the further dump. But from here, you have this eight simple moving average, which is just starting to soften. The 50 and the 200, which is actually getting higher and higher up, uh, which tells me that it's still very, very, very bullish in the trend. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I am not looking to short NVIDIA. I am rather, I'm going to be patient on this one. I'll wait for the drop, and then I will go long once a, a drop that is substantiative to me that seems like the risk versus reward is better in my favor uh, to take it. Now, of course, if you don't believe my premise or my thesis, then you can either, you know, short it right now if that's your premise, or if you think it's just going back up, then you can just go long right now as well. So um, let's keep on the TQs. I haven't traded these in a while either. Um, wow. So what's crazy is you see these big days like this. Let's just go back. I mean, you see these big, awful drops. I think a high of 47 down to 41. That's a pretty nice, sizable um, pullback. I still like this thing at around $38, $37. Uh, I'd love to get it there. Um, much like the premise there, though, we haven't even hit that 50 simple moving average. We're still above it. So likely going to hold pretty strong. Um, and then, you know, we have to break below this, break below that. I mean, to get all the way back here where I think the buying opportunity is really at. Um, unless, of course, a lot of catastrophic issues occur where this thing does make a, a further pullback. Um, truthfully, I, I do believe the banks are in bigger trouble, and I believe the consumer is not nearly as strong and resilient as they are letting on to be. But um, I think the Fed is primed to turn those money printers back on. I think it's killing them. It's breaking their hearts and souls that they are not able to just erroneously print money. Uh, inflation is rampant. Uh, service inflation is running rampant. The core PC, uh, PCI, all of it is running rampant. It's way higher than they're suggesting it is. And the one thing that I think a lot of people are forgetting is that um, inflation is not coming down. It's the rate at which it's rising is lessening. Uh, and I think that's a very, very um, major sign that many individuals are not paying attention to is just that inflation is nowhere near where um, they think it is. Uh, and it's nowhere near getting as good as they want it to be. Sorry, I can't really move my arm. And so as such, they are uh, placating that things are just looking a lot better than they are. So I'll keep it at that. If you have any questions, reach out. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry for the lateness, and I'll catch you on the next one.